Hello, my name is Don Shibu and I'm an application engineer with the Yokogawa Corporation of America. In the third and final part of this three video series, I'll be discussing how to validate measurements from your ECU using the data acquisition. Before I begin, I need to convert my CAN DB file into a format that can be read on a data acquisition. The Yokogawa DLA50E comes with a free software called the Symbol Editor. In this software, I simply upload my DBC file convert it and then export it as an SBL file that the data acquisition requires. So as stated previously, we use the function generator to simulate cam and crank sensor signals from an inline four-cylinder engine. As you can see on the screen of the instrument, we can see the cam and crank sensor signals and we can also see ignition one, two, three, and four, and also injectors one, two, three, and four. One of the major things to take notice of is the firing order of the engine. Since we are simulating an inline four cylinder engine, the expected firing order is supposed to be cylinders one, three, four, and then two. So if we take a look at the injectors, we can see that they're spraying in the order that we discussed. You can also see that the ignitions are firing in the exact same order. Now that the measurements are being made, we can go ahead and validate some various parameters. As you can see here, I have booted the AEM ECU software on my PC. For this test, I'm only going to focus on the following parameters. So if I'm an engineer who wants to validate my RPM readings, I adjust my throttle to the appropriate position. In this case, since I'm using my function generator, I will adjust the frequency to 6000 RPM. And then if you notice, we can validate this reading by looking at the engine speed on the AEM software and also the engine speed being outputted from the CAN bus. As you can see here from the AEM software, I am measuring my spark timing. Currently, the software is reading 25.6 degrees. Let's say that I want to validate this measurement also. I'm able to do this using the data acquisition. By setting my verses on the instrument, as you can see here, I'm able to validate my readings for the spark events that I received through the AEM ECU software. Next, let's say that I want to validate the width of the injector pulses that the ECU is outputting versus the injector pulses that we are getting through the CAN bus. If you look at the screen, you can see that the injectors are firing in the appropriate order as we previously discussed. On the side of the screen is a pulse width measurement from injector one that's being transmitted through CAN bus. This function is easily set up by going into the measure menu and selecting the width measure function. As you can see here, I'm able to validate it compared to the measurements that I'm receiving through my AEM ECU software. And lastly, for demonstration purposes, most modern cars are enabled with a rev limiter. Basically, a rev limiter is a parameter that is programmed that cuts off fuel or spark in the engine once the engine reaches a certain high RPM. Let's say that I want to see at what point the rev limiter is enabled and either cuts the fuel or the spark to the engine. We are currently at about 4,000 RPM. Let's go ahead and increase the RPM and see when it cuts off. As you can see, at around 7,000 RPM, the fuel has been cut off. If we keep increasing it further, we see that both the injector and the ignitions have both been cut off. This is a great test for engineers that want to validate or also observe some of the characteristics of the rev limiter. Thank you for watching the final video in this three-part series. If you have any questions at all or if you require any additional information, please feel free to reach out to an application engineer here at Yokogawa or visit our website at tmi.yokogawa.com.